Hey, everyone. Okay, it is 1.03, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, just wanted to say, once again, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This is such an important and relevant point in time, so we're really excited that that uh, Grady was able to come in and help give us like a deep dive over what everything is, give us a nice overview of what this topic and what the Pick or ICRA program really is um, going to be enabling us to do in the future as, as we are going to be needing it so direly now. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. With Zoom, as we start to share screens, it will take over your entire full screen. If you would like to exit full screen without actually leaving the meeting, if you scroll up to the top of your screen, there'll be uh, an option for more. You'll choose that and you can click exit full screen. There'll be like a few percentages as to like how big you actually want it to be as well, but there's an option that says exit full screen. So during the presentation, um, I'm just gonna let Grady have the floor. Um, unless you need anything, of course, and then we'll pop in. But uh, so if you have any questions or concerns about the information, I'm going to open the chat box as soon as we get started. So you guys can enter it in there. And then afterwards, we'll be doing a Q&A session. So I can read those off to him as needed. Um, we'll also be having a, a short amount of time where people can actually raise their hand. Uh, when you are looking at the participants, that are in this meeting, if you click on the participant box in the, the toolbar, there is a button in the lower right, right or, not, lower right corner that says raise hand. You guys can opt for that and I can call on people individually so that you guys can speak with them directly about what it is that you'd like more information about. So with all of that said, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you, Grady, if, you have a, if you're ready. Very good, thank you. Awesome. I'm going to stop sharing now so you can share your slides, which I think are already up. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining the webinar today, and thanks to the USGBC Los Angeles chapter for hosting this event. I also want to applaud and deeply thank all of the courageous men and women who may be on this call and our colleagues in the field who, despite the many challenges related to COVID-19, carry on with essential construction activity. Hopefully the information in this webinar and the pre-construction risk assessment, infection control risk assessment certificate program it describes will provide additional support to you and them as we work together to ensure a healthier, safer future for all. Let's begin with a brief explanation of Green Advantage. Green Advantage is a nonprofit personnel credentialing organization. Launched with EPA funds, we offer three ANSI accredited personnel credentials targeted to construction workers in the US and Canada. Construction workers earn these credentials by successfully demonstrating their knowledge, skills, and abilities related to high performance, healthy building delivery. Today's topic is the PICRA ICRA certificate program and the hard hat decal associated with this credential is in the center of your screen. The ANSI accredited PICRA ICRA certificate program is designed for healthcare construction personnel. It prepares construction personnel to deliver high quality construction within the healthcare arena. Those who successfully demonstrate their competencies by completing the training and passing the exam earn the PICR ICR certificate. Today's webinar provides an overview of this certificate program that can be helpful to advancing state-of-the-art healthcare construction, as well as improving the delivery of construction projects in general. As we step through the slides, note that the protocols in this pre uh, presentation are subject to recommendations of the CDC, OSHA, and state and local health departments. I believe we all recognize that recommendations from these agencies are in flux, so it's important to stay current and follow applicable guidelines of these agencies as they become available. Here's the agenda for today's webinar. 
We'll begin with a review of the rationale for PICRA ICRA, the why in this slide. Next, we'll examine the PICRA ICRA certificate program's components and value proposition, the what. This will include a walkthrough of some of the learning objectives of the live webinar training offered by GreenPath, our very capable training partner. Then we'll shift to some infection control measures related to COVID-19. These will be from the employer perspective as well as the construction workers viewpoint. Next, I'll share some information about the Pickery Acre Certificate Program, how to register for the live webinar training and the exam. Following the slide deck presentation, I'm happy to respond to your questions. Okay, let's start with a quiz question. What are the two words that sum up why PICRA ICRA in healthcare construction is important? The answer is public protection. Both PICRA and ICRA are designed to help ensure that healthcare construction projects uh, and the patients, staff, visitors, construction workers, and surrounding communities that they are serviced upon are protected. PICRA and ICRA processes apply to healthcare construction, whether it is planned or unplanned. They are important risk protocols that are pertinent to new construction, renovation, deconstruction, demolition, as well as maintenance and repairs. The risk assessed can be within or nearby the healthcare facility. The PICRA and ICRA processes begin during the healthcare construction project planning. The risk and their mitigation measures are documented and PICRA ICRA requires a thorough review by a multidisciplinary team. The team includes healthcare facility administrators, facility staff, infection prevention specialists, and construction personnel. PICRA is broader than ICRA. It's the umbrella for ICRA. In addition to infection control, PICRA focuses on an array of construction risk and how to address them. Other risks include noise, vibration, odors, security, maintenance, fire systems, ventilation, utility systems, and medical equipment. Again, ICRA is part of PICRA. Both PICRA and ICRA are required by the Joint Commission if you haven't heard of it, the Joint Commission is the organization that accredits about 80% of the healthcare facilities in the U.S. The Joint Commission regularly audits over 22,000 healthcare organizations. The Joint Commission's accreditation means that the facility has met the highest standards for safety and quality. The public reputation of the healthcare facility is on the line based upon accreditation from the Joint Commission. The financial viability of the healthcare facility is also many times at stake. The majority of U.S. state governments recognize Joint Commission accreditation as a condition of licensure for the receipt of Medicaid and Medicare reimbursements. A number of private insurance carriers have this same requirement for their reimbursements. Regulatory agencies may require Joint Commission accreditation for reimbursement. It may also be a requirement for organizational certification and licensure or as a key element of their participation agreements. Even prior to the COVID pandemic, five authors of a two-part article in a publication of the Joint Commission in November and December of 2019, pointed to a significant emerging, uh, pointed to significant emerging global risk. They concluded that these risks exacerbate the need for raising the bar on PICRA-ICRA requirements. 
They listed climate change, natural disasters, infectious disease, antimicrobial resistance, and pollution as examples of these risks. The authors went on to prophetically state that these heightened threat levels make the picker processes increasingly critical to the point that they should be considered part of emergency preparedness. So compelling were the high stakes of PICRA ICRA, the authors called for an ANSI accredited PICRA ICRA certificate as a pre qualification for all construction and maintenance workers on healthcare projects engaged in pre construction, maintenance, and construction activity. Some of you may not be familiar with ANSI. The American National Standards Institute is the American representative to the Organization for International Standards, ISO. ANSI accredits personnel credentialing organizations and the credentials they offer. Because of their rigorous requirements, ANSI accreditation is considered the gold standard for personnel credentialing. As a result, their accreditation is widely recognized by governments and private organizations. Green Advantage is pleased to offer three credentials accredited by ANSI. Green Advantage offers the only ANSI accredited PICRA ICRA certificate program available in the marketplace. Now that we've covered the why of PICRA ICRA, let's drill down into describing the PICRA ICRA process itself. There are eight components. First, the healthcare organization must describe the project, whether planned or unplanned. So a planned renovation of a hospital or unplanned construction in the wake of COVID or a natural disaster, such as a hurricane, are all subject to PICRA. Next, surrounding areas of the project must be identified. For example, with an operating room rehab project, the adjacent areas might include the recovery room, the MRI room, as well as other rooms on the same floor below or above the project area, depending upon the hospital's layout. Third, the type of construction activity is selected. For example, it may be an inspection, a small-scale, short-term project, a medium, or a large-scale, multi-year project. Fourth, identify infection mitigation strategies for the type of construction and the characteristics of the occupants. An example might be to maintain negative air pressure within the work site. Another example might be to maintain an anteroom under negative pressure compared to patient areas. Fifth, what might be some other environmental issues and or impacts? These might be air quality or dust, uh, there might be emergency procedures or noise, odors, delivery and storage of materials, waste management, utilities, and equipment management. Sixth, what mitigation methods should be used to address the issues and impacts identified in step five? The mitigation measures need to take into account various inputs. These can include regulatory requirements, history, guidance from experts, and how best to protect the occupants. In step seven, ILSM stands for Interim Life Safety Measures. Uh -huh. The, PIC, the PICRA needs to include an ILSM. If the construction work plan will trigger a life safety code deficiency, interim life safety measures need to be implemented. For example, a fire protection system might need to be taken offline or the egress needs to be rerouted. Continuous monitoring and daily surveillance are needed to ensure that appropriate measures are maintained. Depending upon conditions, the measures may need to be modified. New measures may be necessary. 
A common barrier is lack of trained and competent personnel. Another barrier might be workers not complying with the use of personal protective equipment. And another might be an ability to create negative pressure at the work site due to physical constraints, such as limited access to exhaust points. The learning objectives for the PICRA ICRA certificate program mimic and expand upon the eight components of ICRA. They include the need for PICRA ICRA, the, the components that we just discussed, uh, PICRA procedures and applications. And also critically address construction challenges, particular to healthcare construction, as well as approaches and best practices. Interim life safety measures, regulatory requirements, and construction impacts on building systems are also addressed. In addition, infection control key concepts for both viral and bacterial infections are presented. Transmission factors and precautions are reviewed. Trainees are familiarized with measures that can be taken whether infections are airborne, surface-borne, or waterborne. To underscore some of the infection control issues we face since the COVID pandemic is on everyone's mind, let's turn to some of the construction related information and precautions that are particular to COVID. Note that this information is largely drawn from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Con Disease, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The information is subject to change due to updates in research findings, changes in viral characteristics, and availability of testing and protective equipment, as well as other factors. Some of the precautions are in the PICRA for training. Others are not, but may be considered for inclusion in future PICRA for training updates. A number of studies show that in a significant number of cases, those who test positive for COVID-19 have no symptoms. Dr. Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, estimates based upon research findings that between 25% and 50% of people who get the coronavirus may show no symptoms but still be contagious. A World Health Organization report found that 80% of infections are uh, mild or symptomatic, 15% are severe infections, and 5% are critical infections. So what are the implications of this in preventing spread of the virus? Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation President Stephen Prescott, MD, explained it this way, quote, Assume you're contagious, even if you feel fine. We all have to behave as if we're dangerous to others, especially when it comes to high-risk groups like the elderly. Here's a guide to how long coronaviruses, including COVID-19, can live on some surfaces. You probably touch most of these on a daily basis. Keep in mind that researchers still have a lot to learn about what causes COVID-19. For example, they don't know whether exposure to heat, cold, or sunlight affects how long it lives on surfaces. So consider the implications of this information. For example, what does it mean regarding how we handle material deliveries to construction sites? The next few slides present suggestions about what construction employers can do. As PICRA suggests, employers can perform a risk assessment of, of a job site. It's also important to stay current with federal, state, local, tribal, and or health agency guidance. Employer plans need to reflect governmental recommendations and resources. Workers need to be educated and trained about precautions. These plans need to be communicated to limit spread. 
hygiene practices need to be reinforced and systems need to be in place to make frequent hand washing easy. Employers need to provide hand washing stations and if water isn't available, hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol needs to be available. Physical distance policies and practices need to be clearly articulated and enforced. High risk transmission areas need to be identified, cleaned and sanitized. Appropriate PPE should be available. Reasonable efforts should be made to acquire PPE despite shortages. Workers should be encouraged to self-identify illness symptoms and temperature checks should be routinely made. Toolbox talks should continue, but with a minimum six foot distancing. Construction choke points should be spotted and efforts made to resolve them. Worker interaction when equipment or supplies are picked up or delivered should be minimized. Ventilation rates in rooms can be increased. If practical, negative pressure ventilation should be provided. Closed and confined space access should be limited. It's also recommended that a COVID-19 on-site officer be assigned on large projects. Visitors to the construction site should be screened Shared equipment and common areas should be cleaned and disinfected. Sick, uh, sick workers need to be required to stay home and sick workers need to, to stay at home. It's also important to recognize that workers with ill families may need to stay home. Another helpful approach is to stagger shifts or offer alt alternate days or schedule extra shifts. This will reduce the number of workers on site at one time. Let's now look at some of the measures workers can use. Uh, first, of course, is social distancing while working, but it's also important to physically distance during breaks. Breaks should be staggered and workers are advised not to congregate in break rooms. Workers should not share phones PPE, tools, equipment, or gloves. If sharing can't be avoided, as in the case of tools and vehicles, the shared equipment should be disinfected before and after each use. Of course, water bottles and food and utensils should be shared as well. Workers should wear PPE. This includes eye protection, N95 respirators, gloves, and other PPE as appropriate. Because of the increased demand for N95 filtering, face piece respirators during the COVID-19 outbreak um, have caused shortages. Other, um, and there are other shortages too, as we know, uh, from uh, surgical masks to uh, fit testing supplies and equipment to, of course, the, the respirators. But um, OSHA now, just very recently, a couple of days ago, put out interim guidance about how to address these shortages, and they also call for enforcement discretion. Other measures for workers involve cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting, and workers, and we all, need to know the difference and practice accordingly. Mental health is as important as physical health. Workers need to be mindful of stress and anxiety and fear that they or their colleagues may experience. And they need to use employer assistant programs and other employer resources. Workers should encourage coworkers who are sick to stay home. Frequently, hand washing with soap and water at least 20 seconds or with a hand sanitizer that is at least 60% alcohol based is, is certainly recommended as well. Uh, avoiding touching your eyes or nose or mouth with un unwashed hands and following uh, respiratory etiquette covering for coughs and sneezes. Workers should also avoid close contact with sick people. They should know that they 
or co coworkers may have mild symptoms, but they could be contagious. COVID-19 symptoms should be immediately reported to employers. If sick, workers should stay home. If sick and at work, they should tell their supervisors. Workers are also asked to cooperate with employer response measures and federal and state health recommendations. Again, it's important to recall that infection control is only one component of EPICRA. I'm showing this slide once more to underline the fact that there are many other risks included under the PICRA umbrella that need to be properly addressed. Given the fact that public protection is paramount, it is imperative that we do what we can to heed the recommendations of the experts who call for an ANSI accredited PICRA credential for all healthcare construction workers. Here are some next steps to consider. See here that we have certificate requirements. You have to attend 12 hours of training. You have to pass the exam as mentioned earlier, then that follows the training. Uh, the length of the exam is 50 minutes. It's 25 multiple choice questions. Um, we thankfully, due to green paths, uh, moving quickly from live training to uh, live webinar training. Uh, we have that uh, 12 hours now available through live webinar. We have a training manual that Green Path provides, and then the exam is administered uh, after that. The term of validity of the certificate is through June of 2022, and the fees range from 629 per person uh, down to bulk rates as low as 499 per person, and that's for uh, the training, the training manual, uh, and the exam. Uh, here are some dates that are upcoming for um, the uh, training. Um, Green Path, our, our training provider, uh, as I mentioned, delivers the Pickericker training that's required by the program, and at least two trainings now have been scheduled each month through the remainder of 2020. Uh, following training, uh, as I mentioned, Green Advantage administers the exam, but it's only to those who've completed the 12 hours of training. Those who pass the exam and complete the training are awarded the ANSI accredited PICRA ICRA certificate. Until, until recently, as I mentioned, all of the trainings were in person, um, but, and they're now uh, administered uh, through online webinars. Uh, Green Advantage will be administering its proctored exams online beginning in May. Um, and you can visit the Green Advantage website for more information about Green Pass live webinar training, scheduled trainings, and um, registration information. I want to acknowledge some of the publications that helped inform this presentation. Most of the references come from government agencies. Much of the material about PICRA is drawn from the article that appeared in the Joint Commission publication in November and December of 2019. That concludes today's slideshow. Um, happy to take any questions or comments you may have. Thank you for your indulgence. I've been juggling between two machines here. <laughs> Um, trying to um, get the slideshow to work. So um, thanks for your, your patience. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that I was still on mute. Um, I was saying thank you so much, Grady. <laughs> I really appreciate that. That was amazing how quickly the technological was like really skyrocketed. I mean, I feel like that was, it seemed, it appeared completely smooth. So oh, <laughs> thank, thank you for that. We really appreciate your time with it. Um, we are going to open up for questions now. If anybody would like any more information about any of the content that you heard today, you can either enter it in in the chat box that I started at the very beginning of the session, 
Um, or if that did not pop up for you, if you are looking at your toolbar, if you scroll all the way down, there's a chat option. You can click on that and you can either type it in. Or if it's easier, um, you can also just use the option to raise your hand or unmute yourself, which if you're on the phone, you can use star six to unmute yourself and just ask away. I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that. Pretty. This is great, though. I really, I didn't know a lot of, of the details behind this about Picker Icarus. So I really appreciate you putting this together. And sure, we're all learning, and okay. you know, as we know too, the the information changes almost daily. You know, hopefully the yeah. the search will be advancing quickly, and we'll have further testing available, not only for people who may have the virus, but antibody testing too to see who has had it and and be able to better assess that and their capability to help out, you know, in ways that others who haven't had the virus um, would be barred from doing. Yeah, I heard I heard a lot of people who have previously had the virus have um, been asked to donate their blood for research based on their antibodies. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about mm -hmm. that? I, I uh, heard a little bit about it, yes, and, you know, hopefully that research will be forthcoming soon. Yeah, and keeping our fingers crossed so that we can do more of these face to face also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we have a question from Leda. The information of services on COVID nineteen life, where is this information from as there seems to, as there seems to be a lot of different studies? Oh, okay. Um, I'll go back to the attributions page here. Okay. Um there we go. Um, the, the major sources uh, are the governmental ones been drawing from, um, but there are other sources too. Um, and you can see here some of them uh, that are from uh, CDC. Uh, I didn't list it here, but WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, has quite a few. Um, they're uh, the uh, both OSHA and NIOSH, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, um, have good sources. And then uh, I mentioned Dr. Uh, Fauci. Um, he heads up the National Institute for Allergy and uh, Infectious Disease, Diseases. You may have heard him give presentations at some of the press conferences that uh, the president has. Um, and he He's one of the leading authorities on um, infection control, of course. And there are other sources, again, beyond this, but um, um, if, if there, I, I'm assuming there might be some way that we could share the attribution page if that's helpful to folks. Yeah, so after this presentation, um, within the next week, we'll send out a follow-up email to everybody who is registered uh, with the slides. If that's a ready, we'll, we'll go through and, and make sure that the information that you're providing is the information that you want to provide um, from this. And then we also are recording this. So um, everybody will be able to, to review this if they need it. So we can, we can list this if that's actually easier for everyone in okay. the email directly. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have any more questions or if anybody wants to unmute themselves? Again, that's star six. You just dial star six on your phone and it unmutes it for audio. That's a lot of research also, Brady. Thank you for pulling all that together. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. It, it's unfolding uh, every day and uh, yeah. You know, I'll just mention one other thing that for people to be mindful of. I was looking at some research that had been done in the Netherlands about social mm -hmm. distancing, and it's something to bear in mind. Um, you know, we've been talking about six-foot separation, but on a construction site, you may have windy weather, you know, and you need yeah. to be mindful of that. Or, you know, if you're outside uh, yourselves well, off of a construction site, wherever we may be, um, the, the research was examining um, distancing that would be recommended because of the aerosol stream that may come from somebody who's infected 
who is either walking in front of you, running in front of you, or bicycling in front of you. And um, they recommend that as you get, let's say if somebody's walking in front of you because of the airstream, the aerosol stream that's going to be following them, that you be more like 12 to 15 feet behind them rather wow. than six feet behind them. And then if somebody is bicycling rapidly at, in front of you, they recommend about 60 feet separation. Mm -hmm. So just wow. something for all of us to bear in mind. Of course, more research is coming out all the time, but you know it is important to know that uh, whether we're out on a construction site or we're just at home or you know outside, that um, some of the social distancing isn't just necessarily a fixed number. We have to make some judgment calls based on conditions. Yeah, that makes sense. I I thought about that a lot, even while I'm like going on walks during the day. So that's that's good to know. Thank you for that. Sure. Awesome. Well, with that said, I'm going to share a few slides from our side of things. Um, Okay, so once again, we just really wanted to thank you, Grady, and um, Green Advantage. I'm sorry, there's a typo there. Uh, Green Advantage for all that you guys have done um, and pulling all this content together. Uh, if you guys need any more information on how to sign up for that, the, the other credentials, um, we'll be sending out those links afterwards uh, through the email. And you guys will be able to access that more easily that way. Um, otherwise, uh, our upcoming webinars that we, that we are as we have shifted everything over into virtual content um, for the next month or so, we have uh, other, obviously, webinars coming up. So we have how to utilize the Calgary and the Title 24 updates with the Bike Clean California Act. Um, the Lead Green Associates uh, exam, which I'm excited to jump into as well. I already have my Green Associates, but um, it would be nice to have a review because it's been a minute. Um, so if you have anybody that is looking to get their, their, um, their lead GA certification, send them this way. Uh, we're doing the virtual training for it. In May, we have the Leading Ladies Conversations, which is always amazing and hilarious and really informative, which is amazing that the way that they present content is, is always really fun. Um, it's episode two on conversations on construction. It's May the force majeure be with you. Uh, on the 13th, we have the true ways, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> the true zero ways and circular economy overview. And then we also have the green advantage. Thank you, certification overview. Um, if I can go to my next slide. Okay, and then we also wanna invite everybody to check out our talent portal. Uh, this just went live right before we kind of went in lockdown here in California. Um, and we're really grateful for the timing of it because I, I felt like a lot of the content that we're able to push out through our talent portal is, is very valuable as everybody has switched over to having to use things virtually. So um, for more information on any of our upcoming webinars, uh, the different trainings that we're pushing out, also jobs in the green building industry, uh, we put everything onto this one page on our website so that it, it's, we're trying to form a resource for the green building community as much as possible. Um, and then also, while well, you guys are sitting at home, I don't know if much of us have that much more free time, honestly, I, I feel like I might be even busier. But if you do want to stay involved, um, even though you can't be face to face with people, we have all of our committees where everything is still up and running, we're still moving forward with all of our, um, our annual initiatives. So we have our different committees that run the different portions of that with USGBCLA. We have laser, women in green committee, the, um, the building decarbonization group, the construction committee, advocacy, green schools, and we have our annual legacy project, which we're also working on um, currently right now too. So if any of you want to get involved with any of these different initiatives, we have different pages for it on the website and you can just, uh, they, there's a link for our, our upcoming events, we have monthly calls. And as long as you join in for a monthly call, you are 
associated with the committee. You can jump in with a leader, leadership position if you want to. So feel free to feel free to start with that. Uh, we have MGBCE coming up. We've moved it from May until August. Um, it's going to be both virtual and in person so that depending on what happens at that point in time, we can either push everything online so you can attend without actually having to go to a venue. Um, if by that time everything is safe, we'll also be hosting in person as well, obviously. Um, and that is going to be in downtown Los Angeles this year, LA Trade Tech. It's going to be really exciting. And then thank you all of our sponsors, including Green Advantage. Uh, without these guys, we would not be able to bring content like this to you. So we're very appreciative. And thank you so much, Grady. We really appreciate you pulling all of this together and giving us an overview on the Secret Ecra certification program. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank and John so Desena, if you're on the call, thank you as well from Green Pan. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's still on. Thank you, John. I, I hope so. So <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you guys so much. We really